Hallelujah. Yah Barak, Yah Kedushim, those that have gathered here tonight at Teshua, and those of you that are listening by via of live stream. We do to Yahweh for his mercy, for his Ahava, and for his Torah, his Mishpah. Hallelujah. That he gives to us daily, Israel. Hallelujah. We do Barak Yahweh for the safe return of Rayat Dawid, Israel, his Yesha. We do Barak them for being back. Hallelujah, Yahweh. I do want to begin um, about 30 minutes into the message from Shabbat. The reason why is because as I t touched on talking about Yahweh dividing the flame, and I'm going to read as I started on Shabbat. One thing we must understand, Yisrael, as I did make mention to the scripture that says for us, if we suffer, suffer well. There's nothing wrong with suffering, Yisrael, but let us not suffer as being evildoers or backbiters. Many times we find and relief at feeling like we're suffering for Yah. We're actually we're just suffering for what we have sowed in our flesh. For that which we sow to the flesh, we shall reap it, Yisrael. And if we sow to the wind, of the wind we shall reap the whirlwind. So even though we have the rejoicing on Shabbat, understanding our suffering, and how Yahweh, he divides the flame in Torah, that he will not put on us more than we can bear, but he will put us enough to bring us into, to, into the perfection of his Torah. But what are we suffering? Why are we suffering, Israel? I do want to dig into that a little more in this message. Hallelujah. So there will be scripture, there will be Torah that you will recognize, Israel. But yet it will bring forth the life that we need in this last hour. Hallelujah. Way. So I want to begin again in Psalm to hear them, chapter 29, verse 1 through verse 7. I want to begin reading. Give unto Yahweh, O you mighty. Give unto Yahweh splendor, honor, and strength. Give to Yahweh the honor that is due to his name. Worship Yahweh and the beauty of Kodeshness that is being set apart, Yisrael. You know, that's one thing that the flames or the fire, the heat of it does. Did I not talk about or express how Yahweh divides the flame, Yisrael? One important thing that I will touch on that in this message tonight, Yisrael, is the fire, when it is put to the gold or to the silver, as I will express, the heat not only burns some of the dross, yeah, yeah. but there is dross that the fire actually does not consume, but the heat brings forth a separation. It brings forth a separation. It calls the metals that you do not want in the silver or in the gold or the elements or the ores to be pulled from that that you want to remain precious or what you are trying to purify. We must understand that even in the fire, in this furnace, Yisrael, that we are in, are we not in the furnace? Are we not being tried in this hour? So not only are the things that are going to be consumed by this trial or by this test, there are things that Yahweh must pull. Anytime some, somebody pulls you, and I would get to a scripture that talks about one that is a man that cannot be trusted. If you trust him, it's like a master taking the ear of a dog and pulling it. It's a painful process. Pulling. Someone pulling the limb. Sometimes we, when you play sports, you sprain or you pull a joint or ligament, there's pain there. So we will, we will feel the uncomfortableness of the flame or of the fire of this test. Because it's just Yahweh pulling those things from us, Israel. Making a divide. Not only is he skillful with the sword, but he knows how to apply the heat that does not destroy the gold or the silver, but he pulls out those things that he does not want in us, Yisrael. And in the house of Yisrael, there dwells a lot of drugs. Hallelujah. And it's going to take a lot of fire. It's going to take a lot of flame. But Yahweh, he divides the flame of fire. Hallelujah. Verse 3 in, in uh, chapter 29 of Tehillim. The voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. We remember the waters. The Almighty of splendor, he thunders. Yahweh is upon many waters. The voice of Yahweh, it is powerful. The voice of Yahweh is full of majesty. The voice of Yahweh breaks the cedars. We all remember the cedars, Yisrael. Yes, Yahweh breaks even the cedars of Lebanon. 
He makes them to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Sarion like a young wild ox. In verse 7, the voice of Yahweh divides the flames of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us begin, Israel. In Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. This is Yahweh using his sword upon his people, upon Israel, his chosen, his elect. Does he not know us, Israel? Has he not called us from the foundations of the old land? Hallelujah. Has he not made us? So in that knowledge, he knows what we need. He knows when we need the rain. Hallelujah. He knows when it takes time of dryness, Israel. He knows how to apply the fire of his judgment, hallelujah, of his Torah to Yisrael. Not to destroy us, but to make us, hallelujah, to mold us. How many of you tonight want to be molded in the image of Yahshua HaMashiach? Was it not gold tried? Was it not tried, Yisrael? Was there anything in him that came out that was filthy? Hallelujah. No, it was pure. Every trial he went to, he came forth as pure gold. Even when the heat of the furnace of his trial was upon him, even though it seemed like it was strange as the Abba of the rock was lifted from him on the state, Israel, he cried out, why have you forsaken me, Yahweh? A strange thing. Yet he did not suffer, or he suffered as an evildoer, not doing evil or sin, Israel. What are we suffering today? What is our fiery trial, Israel? Let's talk about the sword. He said, oh, wait, oh, sword against my shepherd. Against the shepherd, those that lead and guide the flock, Israel. Is Yahweh going to bring the separation in his house? And against the valiant warrior that is my fellow, says Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be what? Cut off and die. It shall be separated, Yisrael. Even in Tehillim, I mean in um, Revelations, it talks about this dividing. And I, I will get to that later, Yisrael, of the third, the third part. And here is Yahweh dividing two thirds and only one third is left. And that is the realm. And that's what Yahweh is doing in this hour, Israel. Yeah. Yeah. He's taking apart or he's dividing everything that offends him. Why? That he may get to the very elect and the chosen and the chase. Why? Yeah. To put us through the fire. Yeah. To put us through the test, Israel. Yeah. And it shall come to pass in all that land, says Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. Yeah. And I will bring the third part through what? The fire. Does Yahweh know how to divide the fire, Israel? Yeah. Do we trust our nephesh in his hands that he know what he is doing? So when we are in the furnace or we are in that trial or that test, Israel, and it seems the heat is getting intense, should we move from our place? We should abide. Why? Because this is the purification of the house of Israel. Yahweh knows what he's doing, Israel. He knows how to divide the fire. He's not going to put more on us than we can bear, Yisrael. He's not going to cause or allow the gold to go to waste. And I will refine them as silver. And I will describe that tonight, Yisrael. Hallelujah. The silver. What comes forth out of the silver? I will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call upon my name and I will answer them. And I would say it is my people. Sure, my Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows that when we're in the trials, Israel, in that test. Did I not describe that trial? That it seems that a strange thing has come upon us, Israel. And I talked about how we have not entered that trial yet. Not that trial. Because it's talking about a Pacific trial. I'll get back to that verse. But it's, what we're going through are just small things, Israel. Even to the greatest of our trials, it is just a test to see where we stand with Almighty Yahweh. Just a flame. Did not they increase the heat of the flame 
when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in that furnace, Israel, y'all? Did they not increase it in increments? Hotter and hotter and hotter? Well, we're just in the low flames, Israel, y'all. The flames are just being turned up upon the house of Israel, y'all. Hallelujah. But yet there's a beautiful end. Yahweh knows our end, Israel, y'all. He knows our end. I would say it is my people, and they should say Yahweh is my Abba. Gilyana, Revelations. Chapter 3, verse 15. Does Yahweh know what is in the dross, Israel, y'all? Do he know what's in the silver? Do he know what dross is in the silver? He knows how much. He knows how to take it out. He knows how to pull it, how to separate it from his house. Gilyana, Revelations chapter 3, verse 15. He says, I know your works. What are works? What are works? Works are what we strive to accomplish or what we start and finish, Israel. Yahweh knows that. He knows what we have started. He knows what we have begun. He knows what we have sold. And he also knows what we shall reap. He said, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. He'd rather us to be either or, Yisrael. He'd rather us to be cold, to just be separated, not to be a hypocrite in his presence, in his house, a blot or a spot, in the feast of Yisrael's charity. And he, oh, he desires us and wants us to be hot and fiery yeah. for him, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, I will that you are hot or, or I will that you are cold or hot. So that because you are lukewarm, we're a lukewarm generation. Yes. Yeah. We found a comfortable place mm-hmm. being lukewarm. Sure. That's straddling the fence, Israel. Yeah. Y- Yahweh's not going to use anyone that is straddling the fence. Because as long as you're straddling, you can go either way or the other. That's not what he desires, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, he said, I will spew you out of my mouth. Why? Because you say I am rich and increase with goods. We say that, Israel. We are rich. We are increased with goods. We have need of nothing. We have no need of the Torah. We have no need of the rebuke of Almighty Yahweh. We shun it. Yes, we do, Yisrael. Ozakim, Yeram, they don't sound the same as it was on Shabbat. It is the exact same because it is Torah. It is the truth, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We say we have need of nothing. And he says, and know you not that you are wretched and miserable, miserable. And poor and blind and naked. But what does he say in verse 18 of the third chapter of Gileana? He said, but I counsel of you to buy of me gold. Gold. Tried in the fire. This is not just any flame or candle. This is talking about the heat of a furnace and intense heat, Israel. If Yahweh offers us gold, Israel, believe me, it's pure. Does he not give us gold in his Mishvah, his Torah, sure. his precepts, his concepts, Yisrael? Yeah. That is gold. No corruption in it. It is pure gold. He wants us to purchase that, to buy of that. Gold of me gold, tried in the fire, that you may be rich. And white raiment, that you may be clothed. And that the shame of your nakedness not appear. And that nakedness, we do not even know that we are naked, Yisrael. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach. And he said, I must do this and anoint your eyes with the eye salve that we may see. Blind, Yisrael. When you're blind, you do not see. Even though there's a degree of blindness where there's some sight, but yet because there's not a visual or you do not understand the images, that is a type of blindness too, Yisrael. Yeah. And because our eyes have been blind, we feel like we had all of our, all that we need. Sure. Yes. Yes. As the world said, we were doing good. Yes. Not doing tough, but good. Good enough. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 19. 
As many as I love, Yahweh says, I rebuke and I chasten. He says to be zealous, therefore, and repent. He wants us to be zealous, Yisrael Yah. While we're in the midst of the fire and the flames, we feel this intense heat. He wants us to repent, to turn, to shoot at his rebuke, at his reproof. As I exclaim on Shabbat, that this fire is of Yahweh. And one thing about fire, it will cause you to move. To the left or to the right, if it's behind you, it's going to cause you to move forward, Yisrael Yah. Yahweh has placed us in the midst of his fire. For us to turn, shoe at his reproof. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Do we hear Yahweh knocking tonight, Yisrael Yah? Do we hear the knocking of the Ruach of Abba Yahweh as he knock upon the doorpost of Yisrael Yah? He said, if any man hear my voice and open the door, open the door, Yisrael Yah. He said that I will come in to him and I will sup. I will sup. I will abide with you. I will conversate with you. As he did with Adam in the garden. I will sup with him and he with me. And to him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Even as I have overcome, did it not overcome Israel? Did it not come forth as pure gold tried? As he has overcome Israel, we shall overcome. So let us not jump out of the fire. Let us abide, hallelujah, where Yahweh has placed us. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did they abide in the furnace? Hallelujah. He said, and am set down with my Abba on his throne. How many of us want to sit on the throne with Yahshua HaMashiach? Hallelujah. That we must be a people that endure. Harness as a tough soldier. Or as a warrior that gives his life. Yahshua gave his life. No matter what he endured or encountered, Yisrael Yah, he understood what he must do. He had to go through the fire, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Kepha, 1 Kepha, chapter 4, verse 11. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. 11 through 19, 1 Kepha. And then I will make the turning point in this message concerning the purging of the dross. Hallelujah. Of Almighty Yahweh. In the Hebrew, dross is... Seeg, S-E-E-G. Hallelujah. What is that? It's a process of pulling the corruptible things, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. We must allow Yahweh to pull those corruptible things out of us. Hallelujah. By the flames of the fire of his Torah. First Kepha, chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Almighty Yahweh. Understanding his judgment. Understanding what the Torah speaks unto us. If any man minister, let him do it also of the strength which Yahweh gives. That Yahweh in all things may be magnified and honored through Yahshua HaMashiach. To whom be the praise and manifest power forever and ever. It is so, so let it be fulfilled. Yes, yes. Beloved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, or does it say the fiery trial, Yisrael Yah? The fiery trial. A Pacific. The trial. Not these trials that we experience, the trial of our faith, Yisrael Yah. Not that it doesn't cause us to search deep in our left. But he is talking about an experience that Yahshua experienced on that stake, Israel. Yah. We have not yet got to that point. Beloved, think it not strange, the fiery trial, which is to try you. It is to come, Israel. Yah. We're just in the process of training, of exercises, that we will be prepared for this trial. As though some strange thing has happened unto you. But even 
Now, Israel, we must rejoice. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Yahshua HaMashiach's suffering. We must rejoice, Israel. No matter what we encounter or what we, go, what we go through, no matter how hot the trial or the circumstance, Israel, we must remember, be remembered of the sufferings of Yahshua HaMashiach. That when, he, when his splendor shall be revealed, that you may be glad also with exceeding joy. He said, if you be reproached for the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, happy are you. Are we happy tonight, Israel? Yeah. When we are approached, when we are, when we are tried, we remember the, um, the scourge on Yahshua's back, the stripes that he bared for us. Does it cause us to be happy that we are made partakers in his suffering or in this fiery trial, Israel? For the Ruach of splendor yeah. and of Yahweh, it does rest upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. Don't you know that Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, in this generation, he's evil spoken of, Yisrael Yah. But on your part, he is exalted. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murmur. Yeah. Now talk about that, Yisrael Yah, at the beginning. Let us not suffer as murmurers. That is a type of dross. If you murmur, that is dross in you, Yisrael. And it must come out. It must be pulled from us by the fire of Yahweh. And Yahweh, he knows how to divide the fires, Yisrael. Or as a thief. Have we suffered as a thief? I have. Hallelujah. Is that the fiery trial that was spoken of? No. Hallelujah. Or as an evildoer. I have to raise my hand on that one. Hallelujah. Or as a busybody in other man's affair. Hallelujah. Y'all was hitting the mark tonight, Yisrael. Is that why we're suffering? Is that where our pains come from, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Did Yahshua suffer because he was a murmurer or a backbiter or an evildoer? Yisrael, no. Hallelujah. But yet his pains and his suffering was taken for us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He bared the shame of that on the stake. Hallelujah. For us, Yisrael. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Kedusha, let him not be ashamed. If you suffer as an unrighteous man, does one that does not abide in the Torah, we should be shamed. Hallelujah. But if we suffer as Siddiq or being a condition, let him not be ashamed, but let him magnify and honor Yahweh on his behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of Almighty Yahweh. Now we're getting into the fiery trials, Yisrael. The judgment upon the house of Yisrael. The fire being applied. The separation of the dross. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the message of Yahweh? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall those that do not abide in the Torah and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Yahweh commit the keeping of their souls to him. Do we commit our souls to him, Israel? Do we trust him, Yisrael? Yeah. So if Yahweh turns up the fire, if he shuts the door in the furnace, do we understand, do we know what he is doing, Yisrael? Yeah. Do we commend our nephews to him in well-doing? Yeah. Hallelujah. It is for our well-doing, Yisrael. Yeah. It is for our benefit. As to a faithful creator, do we trust him tonight, Yisrael? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We must understand. That these trials, that the fiery trials of our nephesh, Israel, it's very important that we come forth as pure gold, yes. as a pure vessel unto Almighty Yahweh. Turn to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 1. Mishli chapter 25, verse 1 through verse 5. We must allow Yahweh, allow the fire to purge us, Israel. 
What does the fire do? It searches. That's what fire does. It searches those things that are burnable. So it consumes, Yisrael, those things that are able to be consumed, that it may burn out the dross, that it may cause the separation of the unclean things that are embedded deep in our nephesh, Yisrael, that are deep in our minds. There's things that must come out of us, Yisrael. There's things that must come out that we know of, and the things that must come out that we do not know of. But through the purging of the fire of the Torah of Yahweh, all those things will come to the top. Hallelujah. It shall be revealed to us, Yisrael. Mishli chapter 25, verse 1. These are also the proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, copied out. They did right, Yisrael. It is the honor, it is the honor of Yahweh to conceal a thing. To conceal a thing, Israel, to keep a thing, to hide it. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. That the honor of a king. Are we not kings? Hallelujah. And messengers unto the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. Have not Yahweh elected us, Israel? Verse 3. The Shemayim for height and the earth for depth. That is high, Israel. Yeah, yeah. Higher heights and deeper depths in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And the heart of the kings is unsearchable. Yeah. What is that saying, Israel? Yeah. There are so many things that fills us, Israel, yeah, that are in us, yeah. that actually pushes out the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Circumstances, situation, doubt, sin, dross. And it must come out, Yisrael. It must come out. Verse 3. Verse 4. He says, take away the dross, the sieg, the dross. And what that is, Yisrael, as I explain, it is the moving back away or that which is being separated out of the silver. Sometimes you may get a little tin, the little elements, things that are in the silver that you do not even realize until it's in its molten state. Then all of a sudden there are things that will start pulling out. That's the time for Yahweh to start dipping, or to start pulling, or to start separating Israel in the midst of the flame, in the midst of the fire. It says, from silver, as a vessel is being tried, that is not in the Torah, that's a note that I put, but as silver being tried or being formed, or you want that perfect thing to come forth as a vessel, it is important that the heat be applied to it to cause that pulling away, Yisraeli. He says, to take away the dross. Hallelujah. From the silver. Isn't that what Yahweh doing in this hour? He's separating the dross from the silver. And there shall come forth a vessel for the refiner. Don't you want to be a vessel tonight, Yisrael? Yeah. Don't you know there are many vessels in the body of Yisrael? Vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor, Yisrael. I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to be a vessel that Yahweh has brought into the furnace, into the fire, and to come forth out of the fire pure, yeah. having the, the dross purified. Yeah. Take away the dross, in verse 4, from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the refiner. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in Sadi, or in righteousness, Israel. Yeah. So if we want the throne of Yahweh to be established in our nephesh and righteousness mm -hmm. and surety, a founda foundation that is unmovable, always abiding in the Torah of Yah. Yeah. We must be refined, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Refine me, Yah. Apply the heat, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's move on to Tehillim, chapter 119, mm -hmm. verse 116. 
We're talking about the separation of the dross, Yisrael, the sig. We want all the, the impurities to be purged out, the dross to be pulled away, Yisrael, that we may come forth as the pure gold or the silver unto Almighty Yahweh. Because Yahweh, he's building his Melkut. Yes, he is. Yes. There's a part or there's a place for every one of us, Yisrael, but we must go through the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must go through the flame. Yes. To Helium chapter 119, verse 116. David cries, uphold me according to your word, Yisrael, mm -hmm. Yahweh, that I may, may live. Yes, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Mm -hmm. Are we ashamed of the hope, Yisrael? No, Hallelujah. That is to keep us. Yes, he said, hold you me up, hold me up, and I shall be safe. And I will, I will have respect to your statues continually. Verse 18. He said, you have trodden down all them that go astray from your statues. Mm, yes, he For their deceit or their shakar, the lies, mm. the deception. Yes. And it also describes that as disappointment. Mm -hmm. do, not, do not Torah ascribe that if we put our hope in a man that is not faithful, it is like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. I, I, want, I want to ascribe, I want to move to that, Israel. You don't have to turn there. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 18. He said, the man that bears false witness against his neighbor is a maul. We know what a maul is. When the axe doesn't split it, it takes something more brutal. That is the nature of a maul. It's more brutal than an axe or a knife. It'll bust, it'll split the wood. A man that bears false witness against his neighbor is as a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Yes. It says in verse 19 that confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble. Do we have confidence in Yahweh? He's faithful. Yes. Hallelujah. In time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint, Israel. Yes. Yes. Does that describe us in this hour, Israel? Yes. Is this the dross? That is embedded in us, Yisrael, yeah? unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. yes. Not walking in the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. Is this what Yahweh has to bring out of us, Yisrael? Yeah? Hallelujah. That we'll be ones that are faithful unto the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. yes, Verse 9, 119 of chapter 119. As we move on, Yisrael. Yeah? He says, you put away all the wicked of the earth mm -hmm. like dross. Yes. Yahweh puts away the wicked. He separates them. He pulls them out. Hallelujah. Therefore, I love your testimonies. Now we, he understood that. Yes, yes. That Yahweh out of your house, you will pull out the wicked ones. Yes. Those that are a spot in the bayat of charity, your house of charity, Yahweh. That's why he loved Yahweh's testimonies. That's why he understood that Yahweh's word shall stand. And that is sure, Yisrael. Yeah. Because Yahweh, he does separate the dross like the wicked. Hallelujah. Out of the Olam. Turn with me to Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Chapter 22, verse 17. We're still talking about the dross tonight, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh purging the dross by his judgment. Yeah. By the fire of his Torah. He knows how to divide the flames of fire, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 17. And the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of Adam, the house of Yisrael is to me become dross. My, my, we have become dross. In the eyes of Almighty Yahweh, this seed, this thing that he desires to separate, to pull out of us, Yisrael, the impurities. Yes. Son of Adam, the house of Yisrael is come, is come, become unto me as dross. It says, all they are brass and tin and iron 
and lead. It's talking about the impurities, Yisrael. Those are the type things that come forth out of silver. Those are the elements that come forth out of gold or some of the elements that come forth in the fire or in the flame. He says, in the midst of the furnace. Are we in the furnace, Yisrael? Yeah, yeah. Is not Yahweh applying his mishvah, his Torah to us, Yisrael? Yeah. In the midst of the furnace. And it says, they are even as the dross of silver. Yeah, yeah. We have become as dross, unclean, in the sight of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Yes. Let us move on to verse 19. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh the sovereign, because you are, because you are all become as dross. Does that leave anyone out tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. It doesn't leave a soul out. Behold, therefore, I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver in verse 20. And brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it. And what is he going to do or what happens? Yes. To melt it. Yes. Hallelujah. To melt it. Yes. We try to resist Yah, but Yahweh, he knows how to melt us. He knows how to apply the heat that we bow down unto him. He knows how to make the things that we esteem as high things, or the things we esteem upon his Mishpah, his Torah, he knows how to bring them low. He knows how to melt them down, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We need Yahweh to melt us, Yisrael. We need to desire the fire of the flames of Yahweh to consume us. Hallelujah. To bring out the dross. To melt it. He says, so will I gather you in my anger, in his anger, and in my fury, and I will leave you there. Leave us in the midst of the furnace, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the fire, Yisrael. Has Yahweh forsaken us? No, he has not forsaken us. He knows where we are. He knows where you are, Yisrael. In the midst of the trial, in the midst of the fire, he has not forgotten us, Yisrael. But he has placed us there. Why? Why is he doing this? Hallelujah. Why does it seem strange unto us? That he may purge out the dross or the sea, Israel. Hallelujah. He said, I will leave you there and melt you. Oh, melt me, Yah. Hallelujah. Melt me down. Pull the dross, pull the seed out of me, Yahweh. Hallelujah. That I may come forth as pure gold. He knows how to divide the flames of fire, Israel. Verse 21. Yes, I will gather you. I will blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall you melt in the midst thereof. Do we entrust our nephesh unto Yahweh, Israel? Hallelujah. Do we commit all things in his hands? Hallelujah. So let us abide in the furnace. Allow Yahweh to melt us, Israel. Hallelujah. It's painful. Hallelujah. It's a trial. But just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was, was there even, was the soul still in their feet, Israel? Yeah. Was there a hair scorch on their head? Yeah. Even though they heated the furnace seven times, those that was even surrounded about the furnace, it got so hot that they was consumed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But yet his elect, his chosen were not consumed. We're not going to be consumed in the fire, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh, he knows how to divide the fame. He knows how to turn the heat up. He knows how to get it just right. Hallelujah. That we may come forth pure and perfect. Hallelujah. In his presence. So we're not going to remain in the furnace always. Hallelujah. But there is a time that Yahweh has appointed for each and every one of us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So we must continue. We must abide. We must stay in the trial. We must stay in the flame, Israel. Because Yahweh, he knows our end. Hallelujah. Verse 23. And the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of Adam, say unto her, say unto Israel, You are the land that is not cleansed, nor rain upon in the day of indignation. 
There is a conspiracy of a prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion, raving the prey. They have devoured the souls. They have taken the treasures and the precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Verse 26. Her Kohen have violated the Torah. We have violated the Torah, Yisrael. And have profaned my Kodesh things. They have put no difference between the Kodesh and the profane. Don't we know that's an abomination? To call that which is not tough, tough. And that which is tough, evil, Yisrael. Neither have they shown difference between unclean and unclean. Yahweh, he shows difference between that which is clean and that which is unclean. That is what his mishvah, that's what his Torah does. That's what his ruah is for, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That is what the flames of fire is for. And have hid their eyes from my Shabbat. So don't even keep my Shabbat. Yes, yes. Not even my feast days. They don't keep those. He said, and I am profane among them. I am a perverse thing. I, I am like an unclean, says Yahweh, amongst the house of Israel. Verse 27, her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves raving the prey. To shed blood and to destroy the nephesh of the souls to get this honest, uh, uh, this honest gain. Verse 28. And her prophets or not be have dubbed them with untempered mortar. What happens to a building when you lay it with untempered mortar, Israel? Well, the walls, they're easy to collapse. The building is not sturdy. It doesn't have a sure foundation. It's not planted, Israel. Seeing vanity. And divining lies to them, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, when Yahweh, when he has not spoken. It says in verse 29, The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. And they have vexed the poor and the needy. Do we do that, Israel? Those that are needy of the Torah? We keep it back for them. We don't reprove. We don't rebuke. Zakain. Yes, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Verse 30. He said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. That should be the protection. That should be, be the walls that divide, that keep out. And to be one that stands in the gap before me, before the land. Yahweh, he needs men. He needs up. He needs those that stand in the gap for Israel. That stand in proximity as Yahshua stood for us. That I should not destroy it. But he said, when I look, he said, I found none. None. None that was staying. None that were proclaim the Mishvah before the house of Israel. He says in verse 31, therefore, I have poured, at, poured out my indignation yeah. upon them. Did not Yahweh pour out his indignation yeah. upon Sodom, yeah. Israel? Did not the flames of the fire consume everything? There was not nothing left standing, Israel. He said, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way, their own way have I recompense upon their heads. This is the judgments of Yahweh. This is the fire upon the house of Israel. This is the purging of the house of Yah. Hallelujah, by his indignation. Hallelujah. But you know, Yahweh, he'd rather not go this route with us, Israel. Hallelujah. Judge us, Yahweh, but not in your wrath, not in your fierce anger. That we may become as not or non-existent, Israel. I have recompensed my judgment upon their own head, saith Yahweh, the sovereign. Hallelujah. Let us turn to 
Move on to uh, Proverbs, Mishli chapter 26, verse 16. We don't want Yahweh to consume us, Israel. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Because in his hot distaste, his anger, it will consume everything, Israel. Yeah. That's why it's important that Yahweh divides the flame. That he applies the right heat. Oh, it's going to get hot, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But he's not going to consume his house. He's not going to forsake his house, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Talking about dross, the sieve. Proverbs, Mishli, chapter 6, 26, verse 16. It says that the slugger is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. He that passes by and meddles with strife, belonging not to him, is like one that takes a dog by the ears. As a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and death. That is what a slugger is like, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He casts. It's like the firebrands that are being cast. What are firebrands? It can be explained as missiles, but it's basically arrows with fire on them, Israel. As a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and, de and, and death. Verse 19. So is a man that deceives his neighbor. Did I not talk about deception or putting your trust in an unfaithful man? This is the dross that Yahweh is talking about that is in his house, Israel. And saith, am not I in sport? Verse 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So fire needs wood to fuel it, does it not? And where there is no talebearer, strife ceases. Hallelujah. Is there strife in the house? Is there strife in the bayat? That is not looking to your neighbor, Yisrael, or looking around you. Oh, I know one. No. Don't you know the heart is deceitful of all things, above all things, and desperately wicked? That's where the strife lies. That's where the impure things that Yahweh wants to sift or separate from us it's in your own love, Israel. Verse 21. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. It's talking about the dross, Israel. Verse 22. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. It even calls ulcers, deep wounds. Deep wounds in our minds, in our lives, in our nephews, Yisraya. And it talks about also the burning lips. Burning lips and a wicked laugh are like a pulse hurt covered with civil dross. It's not pretty, Yisraya. There's no value in it. There's nothing to be redeemed, Israel. Talking about the dross, Israel. These are the things that must come out of us, Israel. These are the things that are embedded deep in us that takes the fire of the judgment of Almighty Yahweh to purge out. Hallelujah. By his word, by his Torah. If you will, let's turn to Isaiah. Hallelujah. As I come close to bringing this to an end, Israel. Hallelujah. And I will continue this because there's, there's so much on this, on the dross, on the fire, on Yahweh dividing the flames of fire. Hallelujah. And he knows what he's doing in this hour, Yisrael. We must commit. We must trust him. We must have imuna that whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, that not only do we give told out unto Abba Yahweh, but that we find in our present circumstances to be content. Hallelujah to abide there. Hallelujah. It's just Yahweh purging us. Hallelujah. By his Torah, by his fire. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. He says, come now. Let us reason together, 
says Yahweh, though your sins, what are sins? It's seed. It is draw Shizrayah. It is transgressing the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. Though your sins are as scarlet, they cannot be hid. They're bright. I see them. They're not hid. They should be white as snow. Hallelujah. That takes a burden, Israel. That takes the miter. It takes the fuller soap. It takes cleansing to turn that which is crimson, that's that, something that is red, white, Israel. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be as wool. How many of us desire tonight for Yahweh to purge us and to cleanse us? Hallelujah. That we come forth as wool. Verse 19. He said, if you be willing and obedient, that's all it takes, Zakane. That's all it takes. He said, if you be willing and you be obedient, he said, you shall eat the tub of the land. That's all Yahweh desires for his house, Israel, yeah. is to eat the tub of the land, to eat of the fruit of our labor. Hallelujah. If we labor in tough things, we shall bear, bear for, forth tough fruits, Israel. Yeah. Verse 20. But if you refuse and you rebel, you shall be devour, devoured with the sword. For the mouth of Yahweh have spoken it. Did not we talk about the sword at the beginning of this? Yahweh using the sword of his indignation. Hallelujah. Until the Zod came. Until the pastors, the leaders. Hallelujah. And scattering the flock. Verse 21. Oh, how the faithful city has become a harlot. She was full of justice and righteousness lodged, lodged in it. But now murderers. Verse 22. He says, your silver is become dross. He says, your wine mixed with water. Who wants wine mixed with water? Whether it's juice, you want the purest of the juice. I know I do. The sweetness, I don't want it mixed with water. So a lot of times we try to add water to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We try to mix it, try to thin it out, that it's not so strong. Verse 23, your princes are rebellious and the companions of thieves. He says, everyone's gift and bribes and follows after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. Do we forget the widows, Israel, the fatherless? Verse 24. Therefore says servant Yahweh of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, alas, I, I, will eat, I will be eased of my adversaries and avenge myself of my enemies. And I will turn my hand upon you and, pur and purely purge away your dross as with lil or isle, and take away your alloy. What is the alloy? Mm -hmm. yes. That is the specks or the metal or the dross that is in the silver or in the gold, mm -hmm. yes. which is being refined or purified by the fire, Israel. Yeah. Yes. Verse 26. And I will restore your judges as the first. And your counselor as in the beginning. But first we must come through the fire, Yisrael. First we must allow the flames of the heat to purify us. Afterward you shall be called the guarded city of Sadiq and the faithful city. He says Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. That's the only way we're going to be redeemed, Yisrael. It's by the fire. It's by Yahweh the fly, the, the it's by Yahweh dividing the flames. It says, and her converts with righteousness. Verse 28. Hallelujah. Turn me to 1 Kepha. I'll read verse 28. Go ahead and turn to 1 Kepha, chapter 1, verse 1. Ver 2 through verse 9. Then I'll bring this to a close. Hallelujah. And I will pick this up next time, Israel. I'm up. That's all right.
Hallelujah. Bless Yahweh. So should we, should we give Yahweh Toda for the fire? For the flame? For the purging? Hallelujah. Even if it burns us a little, sin just a little, it's just the sin, Yisrael. It's just the burning. That's what he's burning. That's what he's trying to pull out of us. Hallelujah. Verse 28. And the destruction of the transgressors and the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake Yahweh shall be consumed. Consumed by the fire. Consumed by the flame. So let us not forsake Yahweh. Who are those that forsake Yahweh? Those that turn. That do not abide in the fire. They cannot stand the heat, Yisrael. They shall be consumed. Now, First Kepha chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 9, I want to read. Hallelujah. This is Kepha speaking unto the house. Hallelujah. Kepha, an apostle of Yahshua HaMashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethiana. Alike according to the foreknowledge of Yahweh our Abba, yeah. through being made Kodesh of the Ruah, how? To the, to the obedience of the sprinkle of the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, to the free unmerited pardon to you, and shalom be multiplied. Blessed be Yahweh, the Abba of our master Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. Which according to his abundant mercy, is he not merciful unto us, Yisrael? Is not his mercies renewed every morning? His mercies have begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible. Incorruptible, Yisrael. Our inheritance is incorruptible. Not one that is full of dross. Not one that could be consumed, but that which is everlasting. And undefiled. And that fades not away. Reserved in the Shemayims. For who? Yeah. For you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who are kept by the power of Yahweh through Imuna to salvation already to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice. Do we greatly rejoice, Yisrael? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let you know, Yahweh, he knows our end, Yisrael. Yeah. Wherein you greatly rejoice, through now, though now, for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation, trials, by the fires trying us, Yisrael. That the trial of your imuna being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Does gold perish? Does silver perish? Yes, it does. But by the refining of our nephesh, Yisrael, by the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, it should never perish. It should never fade. Though it be tried with fire, might be found to the praise and the honor and the splendor at the appearing of Yahshua HaMashiach. Whom having not seen, we have not seen him, Yisrael, but yet we do love him. Hallelujah. Do we truly have him tonight, Yisrael? Hallelujah. And whom, though now you see him not, yet you believe. And you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of honor and full of praises. He says in verse 9, receiving the end of our Edomuna. What is that end, Yisrael? Hallelujah. It is the example that we continuously hear all the time in Torah concerning the gold and the silver. It's our nephesh being purified. It's our vessels being purged for the using of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Receiving the end of your imuna, even the salvation of oh, yeah. your nephesh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't you want your nephesh to be saved, Israel? Yeah. Don't you want to be saved in the end? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. That we must go through the furnace. We must enter into the fire. Hallelujah. But as of a surety, Israel, Yahweh, he knows. He divides the flame of fire. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Barak, y'all, Yisrael, y'all. I pray that this simple message tonight has been a strength to your nephews, to a lift to Yisrael, y'all, to just abide, to stay in the place that Yahweh has you in. Hallelujah. It's for the purification of your nephews. Hallelujah. That we come forth as gold tried and as silver being purged by the fire. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Let's stand to our feet, Yisrael, y'all. Is it Yahweh tough? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Way. Hallelujah. Let us turn unto Yahushalai. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we do Baraki for this scripture of truth. Night Yahweh, that we're able to know and understand, Abba Yahweh, that we commit our souls, our nephews, into your hands to purify and to purge us, Yahweh, to mold us and to make us into that vessel that you desire us to be, Abba Yahweh. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, that your Melikim will camp around those tonight, Yahweh, your elect, those that have come from near and far, and those that have listened by via of live stream, that you will watch over us, Yahweh, that your word that your mishpah will be a hedge about us as it was about you. In all things, we do barak you, and we give you toda, and the precious and powerful name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do cry. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, way, hallelujah. Yah Barak Israel, hallelujah.